In this tutorial, we're going to look at performing duplicate lookups. Now, if you've used any of the lookup functions such as VLOOKUP or MATCH, you'll realize that they're not very good at handling duplicates. In fact, they'll only return a result for the first instance of the lookup value that they find in a column or row. Now, there are quite a few steps involved in this formula, but to start off with, what we need to do is find um, the row position of each of these rows within this table. And we're going to use the row function to do that. Now, normally with the row function, you just specify a single cell. So, for example, if I selected A4, it would give the position 4 because it's the fourth row in the worksheet. What we're going to do is select the whole column. And you can see that I've named this table sales and it's referring to the name column within that table. I close the bracket. If you're not using tables, it will come up with the normal cell reference in here, A4 to A11. I've converted this range to a table. But what we'd say is minus three because we are starting in row four within our worksheet and I don't want to count those first three uh, rows. So if I press enter, the result is one. And what it's doing is just giving the result for the first cell within that range. Normally, as I said before, row only works on a single cell, gives the position of a single cell. We're asking it to perform its calculation on an array. And to, the, to see the result of the array, you can use the F9 trick. To use the F9 trick, select the text within your formula, formula press F9 on your keyboard, and then in brace brackets, you can see each position of each row within that table. Um, you'll need to undo your F9 trick, otherwise it will hard code those values in. So Control Z will take you back to the formula and I'll just press Enter to confirm. Now the next step is to only return row numbers that correspond to this name here, the, the to Ben. So we don't want to return 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We only want to return 1, 3, 5, 6, 7. So we're going to use an if function for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if this range, cells in this range, equal this name up here, which I'm going to fix on row because I'll be copying the formula down eventually, comma, then we're going to return the row position that is calculated by our row formula. Now, just to see what it's doing here, I'm going to use my F9 trick again. And what you can see is it returns one, and then when it gets to Fred, it returns false. The next occurrence of Ben is in position three, then Greg gets a false, then five, six, seven for Ben, and then false for Fred again. So you can see it's returned a numeric position for each occurrence of Ben within our table. Control Z again, so we come out of that hard-coded version of the formula and I'll press enter. Now the third step is to get the formula to return these row numbers, one, three, five, six, seven, independently as we copy the formula down. And we can use the small function to do that. So small allows you to specify a range and then you can say, for example, return the first smallest or second smallest or third smallest value within that range. So what we do is we put this whole formula within small. The array is going to be the row numbers returned by our current formula, comma. And K is, as I said, either first, second or third, fourth, fifth, sixth smallest value. Now, to get Excel to return 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, as it's copied down, we can use a little incrementer. So what we'll do is we use the rows function to do that. And we can say that the row is basically count the rows within the range D4 to D4. Now, if I fix that D4 on row, what will happen is as I copy this formula down, the incrementer will work. So initially it's D4 to D4, which would give a number of rows as one, but as I copy this down, that 
this d4, the second d4 would change to d5, so the number of rows would be 2. So it would calculate the second smallest uh, position, uh, smallest value within this range. So let's close the bracket there. And I'm going to have to use Control Shift Enter to confirm this. And Control Shift Enter, as you may know, creates what's called an array formula. You can see I've got brace brackets around the whole formula. Because I'm using a bunch of array uh, arrays within these uh, other formulas, it's going to require that Control Shift Enter to work. Otherwise, it would just get a whole load of errors. Now, if I copy this down. You can see it returns one, three, five, six, seven. And I've got this extra one here because there is nothing beyond position seven that relates to Ben. So we're going to have to deal with that num error later on. The fourth step is to use the index function to return a value from the sales column based on the position of Ben within the name column. So let's click into this initial function uh, formula that we have. And so index requires an array which would be the values you want to return, uh, the array of values you want to return from or borrow from, the results array, comma. And then the row number is specified by our small function. We don't need a column number, so we can just close the bracket. And again, I'll need to do Control Shift Enter to create an array formula. Copy this down. And what it's doing is it's returning the sales results now for Ben. The final step deals with this num error, uh, which is caused by the formula being copied down too many times for Ben. Ben only has this number of sales. We've copied the formula down um, one extra time, so it returns a num error. It'll be worse for Fred and Greg. We'll get more num errors with them because they have less sales. Now, what we can do is use a little if function. So I double clicked on the first formula. And I can say if what I want to do is count the number of times the formula is being copied down. So I can use a rows function to do that. I can say in the range D4 to D4, count the number of rows um, in that range. If I fix this D4, it'll become a little incrementer. So as this copied down, this as this form is copied down, D4 will change to D5 and then D6, and it will increment the number of rows it's being copied down to. And what we want to do is compare that with, and say, is it less than or equal to a count if of, well, a count if within this range, and our criteria being Ben or whatever is in E3, and we'd need to fix that on row. Close the bracket for the count if comma, and that's our logical test. So is the number of times the formula has been uh, copied down less than or equal to the number of times that Ben appears in this name column? If it is, we want to perform this index function to return the sales value. But if not, then rather than returning a num error, we want to return an empty text string. And close the bracket, control shift enter to confirm. And then if I double click to fill down, it gets rid of that num error. Let's see if this works for the other names. So if I wrote Fred in there, not case sensitive, but you can see I only get two. Fred's only occurs twice. And then if I put in Greg, I should only get one. 